So I'll just do just a hands up so I get a better idea. So how many of you do Angular? I've been playing. So how many of you actually write applications like real applications in Angular and not just playing with it? Okay. And who ever heard about Electron? Okay, who played with Electron? Okay, so that's a good audience because then I have plenty of things to tell you. Um, so, let's jump right in. Um, so, this is the agenda of what we're going to have. So, we'll do a little bit about history because I have a tendency of trying to explain why it's there because there's a reason of those kind of tooling. Um, how, how, we can, how it's used today because it's not something that uh, is just barely used and it's quite, it's quite a, a big platform today. A bit of architecture on how uh, it works under the hood. Uh, sometime on the communication, so how do you handle communication with Electron. And last but not least, how you can actually play along Angular with Electron. So I'm not going to talk about that again, but that's me. It's just the French thing. And it's just for the joke. Um, I do love baguettes, actually. So. Anyway, so a bit of story uh, around Electron, so I'll start with that. So most of you know what is Chrome and Chromium. Uh, the purpose of what Electron was at the time is people were starting to wonder, saying, uh, sorry, what was about Node? So let's start with Node, sorry. Um, so the idea behind it was to say, we actually have a lot of JavaScript stuff and it works well and why is, so why do we can't run that uh, as a backend? So what basically people did at the time of Node is just taking away everything which is which makes Chrome an application and just kept the engine of it. It's like just like ripping apart a car and just taking the engine to actually do something with it. So that's that's essentially what uh, Node is about. So not spending too much time on that. Uh, so going back then to Electron. Electron is the reverse thing. So they actually took back what was Chromium, so meaning handling of Windows, uh, some additional processes that you can handle from a UI perspective along with the Node engine. But what they also actually brought with Electron is the fact of being able to build apps using your web stack competencies, so JavaScript, CSS, HTML, blah, blah, blah. And with a set of additional APIs. So what are those APIs? So the, the idea behind it is to be able to grab some of, the, um, some of the APIs you can do on a normal app or what you would tend to do with a normal application running on the desktop, regardless if it's a Mac, a Windows, or a Linux machine. And the idea is that this is, I put a few examples here, for example, a browser window. So being able to open a window that handles HTML in it. Uh, being able to handle notifications, so notifications, I mean, the ones on Windows are pretty bad anyway, but uh, the notifications you have on top on your Mac. Uh, menus, so like a real window menu on a, on a Windows app or menus that stick on top of your, for your Mac app when you're in the context of your app. Dialogues, that's pretty basic. File protocols, so if you have a, that's basically like HTTP, so you have, if you have your app, it's going to be your app to that slash slash. So if somebody clicks on those kind of links, your app will be able to sneak in and to be able to, inter to intercept those calls from within the OS to actually open uh, those links. And that's just for the joke, you can actually also include the touch bar. So if you want to make uh, funny stuff with a Mac using Electron, you can actually go and place icons straight into the touch bar with Electron. Of course, that doesn't apply to other platforms. I don't even know if you can... Uh, if you have Linux on a Mac machine with a touch bar, no. I'm not going there. Um, but that's, that's about it. Um, so, who is using it? Uh, so, some of the examples that I put here uh, for... Um, the first one is on purpose because uh, there's, an, there's a, a very famous editor which is called Atom. Atom, if I say it properly. Um, and this, uh, this editor was actually the start of Electron. So it started with, uh, it started and it was called at the beginning Atom Shell. So they started with Atom and saying, oh, we're actually building something 
and we're trying to run an app which is all built in HTML and JavaScript, and we want to run it on multiple machines. So there's probably some things that people would want to do. So a bit like Twitter did with Bootstrap or those kind of technologies, they just said, oh, let's try to take that and make it as a project outside of uh, Atom. So the first name was Atom Shell because it's the shell of the Atom editor. And that, uh, after a while they said, let's find a, 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 a real name around it. And that's where Agacom came in the picture. VS Code, which is a pretty, it's, it's not that famous, but it seems that it's the, the trendy editor of these days. So it's all built uh, using Electron. Slack, if you ever use Slack on Mac or Windows, it's all built with Electron. And Git Kraken is an interesting one. It's kind of, if you're fed up with source tree, that could happen to some people, like me. Uh, you can actually uh, use Git Kraken, which is a, a Git client building HTML and CSS using Electron. Okay. So that's, that's for the example. I, I, I was making the point here to say it's not something which is just around for a, a few months, and that actually people are running real applications on that. So I'm just on the numbers. I think the one I have is for VS Code. I think they. I got a number, I've been seeing it, there's around two to three million people who are coding live on VS Code daily. So that's to have a, just to have a scale of how much, how big an application you can build with that can actually be used. Sir? This code is an electron also? Oh, good one, I'll, I'll have it there. Okay, thanks. Um, so a bit of architecture, so if you think of, this is just to, to give you a perspective of what you do today and what would change if you do it in Electron. Uh, what you do today, like the basic, let's say, applications you build, you have uh, a front-end part, which is, in this case, Angular, so client-side running application, and then you have, in that case, for example, some node services running in Express or whatever is your framework you want to use, and this is basically the, the, the app you can build today. If you're using, if you're using uh, Electron, there's not, not much that is going to change per se, it's just you can still have your backend, the same services with it. The only thing that you can add on top is going to be that box, which actually is going to contain your front-end code within a box that runs like a window. I, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll probably emphasize it a few times during the talk, is Electron is just a browser. It's a browser that runs with additional APIs so that you can do more than just a web app. It's a web app, let's say, with, um, I would say, uh, let's say with some additional APIs so that you can take, care, take advantage of running on the machine. One, thing, one, one that I forgot actually, you can actually open files. So getting access to the file system through the app because it's a desktop app at the end. So um, a little bit of architecture. We'll see. We're just going to see it a little more, little bit more, sorry, in details in a few few minutes. So the way uh, Angular, um, sorry, Electron works, you have uh, what they call the main process, which is like the bootstrap of your Electron app. That's just where it starts to to live. And as soon as you start to say, hey, actually in my app I want to show a window and another one. Any of those windows will come with what they call a render process, which runs behind the window and handles everything which is from the life cycle of the window. So all your HTML and CSS is isolated in there. A bit like Chrome today is able to handle multiple tabs and you can kill a tab without killing the others. That's basically the same principle. And demo. Demos are way easier to understand things. I'm just going to open my nice source tree to see if I'm on the right branch. Yes, I am. And let's go straight in the code. So I'll start with that. So this is the root. Um, can you actually see it properly? Or yeah, ah, how do you zoom in? Okay, zoom in. It's too big now. Ah, let's do that. Is it better? Is that okay? Okay. Um, so basically what I wanted to show you, so that's the, the, root, the, root, the root project. So I have a package JSON with a few dependencies and so on, and I have uh, a few scripts that I can run just to, to pre-start pre the, the application. 
this, uh, this is the main process I've been talking about. So just for the sake of the exercise, I actually, and because it's as Angular behind the scenes, you can actually use uh, TypeScript along with Electron today, so that if you want to have some strongly typed uh, Electron code, you can actually do so in that case. So for example, here you see I'm having my window, which is of type browser window. So if I go and I search for it right there, uh, I can actually come here and I can do this. And this is all the objects and methods and properties which are exposed on the Windows object. That was a really quick one. So as you, as you can see here, there's really nothing fancy. It's just JavaScript with a couple of specific objects to Electron. But I'm saying I have a function that says I'm creating a window that says here's the window, here's the coordinates, blah, 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 load the URL. In that case, it's a file. So I'm loading a local file within my application, like a normal file would be. And then at the end, the only thing I'm doing is I'm just, uh, I think it's at the very end, I'm just saying when the app gets activated, I'm creating the window. Very, very basic, very simple, nothing fancy, nothing fancy in there. Where it starts to get interesting is that if I go uh, over in my source, everything you will see here will look pretty familiar to you because you've been doing Angular. So what I mean by that is that I have an index.html page and uh, what's the app? what is this app root? Interesting. Um, and in there I have a main TS. What's there? Well, is there? Is there anything special to Electron in there? No. It's just Angular core, platform thing, app module, environment. So things you've been seeing and something you know how to deal with. No, nothing, again, nothing fancy. Just plain HTML and JavaScript like you would do it uh, on the front end. So then the question is, how does how this is actually going to run if I run it? So I get something. So uh, it's important to try. I'm just going to do an npm start. So everything is already plugged within uh, Electron to help you with that. So Electron is going to show up in just a sec. Come on. There you go. So that's an empty window. And that's really interesting to see how it works. So if you see here, perhaps not very clearly, it says it cannot find the index.html. So basically, the way Electron works is that Electron boot up saying, I'm looking at that folder to actually show things, but nothing was in there. So what runs behind the scene is what you would expect of having an Angular app is I'm actually building my app, just getting the files, compiling them, and so on. So as soon as the compilation was done, the files are being outputted inside of the folder that is the folder on which Electron is looking at to actually show, up, show your application. So basically, that's what we have here. And I'm, 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 the button doesn't work. Um, <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> that was not the, 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 the effect ex accepted, but anyway. Uh, I can go here, and I'm pretty sure I did it on purpose. Seven? Oh, OK. <laughs> So what you can do here, actually, and I think this is what is being done. I can actually open my HTML. I see here it's showing a notification. And actually, the notification doesn't work for some reason. So what I'm going to do, and because it's Angular running with Webpack behind the scenes, so again, nothing fancy, I'm just going to copy paste this and go in my HTML and say, hey, by the way, this is not exactly what I wanted you to do. This is what I want you to do. So I'm just going to save. Yes. Supposed to. What is it doing now? Did it reload? Yes, it did. So then I can do I can do inception. I can open a window that opens a window that opens a window. That's so cool. Woo! <laughs> so that's the basic example. It's just in that case what I'm doing here, and you can actually see it uh, from the component point of view. I'm just saying window dot open and. This is also something to, to look at when you're using Electron is some of the APIs, which are browser APIs, have been overloaded by uh, Electron so that you can handle it in an Electron context. Opening a window, per se, like you do it in a browser, opens a new tab. But in the case of Electron, what you really want to do is open a new window that points to something which is 
a pop-up or a setup screen or a setting screen, whatever. But in that case, this is exactly what it does. It opens a new window. It's not a, it's not a browser window or a tab per se that you would look at in the case of, uh, of uh, Chrome. So. Any questions so far? Who maintains the browser support? Who maintains the browser support? Yeah, so so like every time, uh, <laughs> I think right now they are on Chrome 63. Oh, it's definitely a Chrome port. They are taking the Chromium version of the engine and they are just pouring it inside of Electron, basically. And every time they, sometimes they just take, it's, yeah, I think it's 63 right now. So some, from time to time, they just upgrade from one version to another. And it just comes with the new set of features that comes with the browser in that case. And that's actually the end of the first small demo I wanted to show you. But yeah, what I want you to keep in mind in that case is the root part is what makes Electron with his uh, main process to run, and everything then that happens in there is kind of your basic Angular app, just something you know already. So you can still send requests over HTTP? Oh yeah, you can, you can, I mean, because it's all JavaScript, you can get your HTTP, uh, HTTP service object uh, dependency from Angular and just make calls to whatever you want. That's just, it's just a container, so anything you do in a, in a web app, you can do it in there. There's no difference. There's a, a few differences, but they are not intrusive in the sense that they are not going to break anything. But I'll, I'll come to that in, uh, in, um, in the second part. So that was for the demo. What are you doing? Okay, so as I demonstrated so far, it's quite of a simple framework. My point is exactly what we chat about. You have an up-to-date browser, so everything you build in there, if you want to go for, let's say, the latest features inside of Chrome to be able to handle audio or video capturing, for example, which Slack uses to do share screen sharing, you can do you can do it because it's just at the end it's just Chrome with one of the latest version. So that's pretty easy. Um, again, it integrates like a real app on your computer because you can benefit from what's on your computer per se, with the, the resources, we talked about menus and those things. Uh, I show also that the main process can actually uh, run, uh, you can actually, uh, you can write your JavaScript using TypeScript. And the render process, I, I'll show you that a little, little later, is that because at the end you have Chrome and you can use things like NWJS or Browserify or those kind of things, you can actually run processes inside of your front end, so your web pages, like you would do with the node process. You can do a require, for example. That's one of the examples. That's, that's basically what I just uh, talked about just before. So this is on the, right, on the left side of Chromium. So as you can see, of course, you have your main process in your tabs, and this directly translates in the case of Electron on the exact same kind of mapping, you have your main process that is not something you see, but which actually opens and shows windows on top of your screen, so that's your app, per se. Very quickly, the communication part. We actually, we saw it just right here. I can see inter-process communication. So this is something you also can do with Electron. You are not supposed to, I mean, you can do just basic uh, HTML stuff and so on to rely on your outside service, but if you have more complex logic to, so that you want to bring back information in your main process and pass it on to other windows or even chat between windows, this is what you can do. So the example is going to be uh, right over here. I didn't modify stuff, okay. Discord. I'm just going to switch over here. But this guy is going to go, to go crazy. Because I'm just, yeah, of course. <laughs> Doesn't like what I'm doing now. Hey, okay. Let me kill you. There you go. So, so what we'll see right now is, again, very simple example, but uh, it's pretty easy to understand. So I'm going to go back to my, ooh, what was that? Um, I'm going to go back inside of my inside of my main file, which is going to be down there. And what you can see here is that we have 
basically the same code. I've just been adding something interesting here, which is this kind of things. So here, for example, I just put a ping, which is going to say, on, if I get uh, an interprocess request, which is going to be of type ping, then I'm going to reply pong. Okay. Don't get me wrong, this is a very simple example, but we'll go, uh, this one is a lot more interesting. So I'll just start with that one, and I'm actually going to end up in the same place with my component, and actually open my component.ts, and I have a test method, and this I'm going to open here, and I have a type object, so that's the fancy example. Let's start with the simple example. I'm just going to drop that here. Saving. Running. So what's going to happen now is, because the app was, and this is uh, exactly what I've been showing you in the first demo, is there was no HTML, so there was nothing to show. It's going to show up straight with the HTML we got before, but this guy is going to be reloaded. So if I go back here, you can see that my compilation is running. And you are. And while the compilation is running, as soon as the compilation will be done, I can go back here, and this guy is going to refresh. So. That's the hot reload thing we are talking about. So in that case, what I'm doing here, again, nothing fancy, I'm typing here. You see I'm getting Pong on this side, so it means that the call I've been showing you on the main process is getting called from my, my window and it comes back. That's the easy part. Something more interesting now is if I go actually in my, and I can do that so that I'm lazy, uh, just going to recompile. And in that case, it's a little bit more interesting because when I say send type object, what, what I mean by that is that if you look here, I've been actually uh, adding some interfaces inside of my project, which is like this iMessage stuff. Uh, again, this is a message with a body, blah, blah, blah. Again, nothing very complicated, but I'm actually building a structure, okay? And something which is always a pain when you are doing uh, let's say JavaScript on the server side and the client side, unless you're using things like Swagger, for example, you have problems uh, circulating with types from one side to the other. In that case, what you can do, and in a pretty, in a pretty easy way, is that you can say, I'm sending a message which is going to be of that type, and you see here, I've actually built a service which wraps the, the calls done to Electron to actually do the same IPC call, but in a, let's say, in a more uh, wrapped manner. I'm actually injecting myself this, this, uh, what is it? this electron service that you see here, and I'm just reusing some of the methods I built to say, on the IPC render, which is the process, I want to send an object and of this type. So by doing that, the interesting thing is, if I go back inside of my main, it's there actually, if I go back, back on my main, no, not that one, on my main uh, TS, you can see here that I'm able to then know and to cast the object straight so that I'm able to avoid issues on, 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 on accessing the object because it's not typed, all these kind of things. And the cool thing about it, I'm going to show it again, is that this guy, I message, for example, you see I have a folder which is interfaces. And the cool thing about that is that because this file is found inside of the application and both uh, my main process and the application can both access the files which are inside of the application, I can actually have my type shared. That was the point of uh, this demo. So if I go on the typing also, I didn't run this one, but that's going to be pretty easy. If I click here, what's going to happen is I'm getting hello back. So going back on the example, you see that here I'm saying hello process, creating a body and so on. and when I'm getting back the object on the main process, you can see that uh, here I'm actually returning the hello back using the same structured object on both sides. Any questions so far? Yep? So the support back in C is a support parallel or parallel? What do you mean by parallel? So if you write a process or if you run parallel processes to allow them? Uh, not, not necessarily. The, the, the way you have to think about Electron is that uh, when you think about the process, every window is a process. So uh, things you run inside of that are impacted by what you run in the process itself. If you want to spawn other processes, that's more a node thing. So if you want to handle this kind of things, you can actually have 
um, potentially a specific stack that you integrate on your main process side. So instead of the Electron server side part, if I can see, client server side part, that's weird. Uh, uh, inside of Electron, the, you would be able to do it here, but not in the window process, potentially. So is the main file running from the browser? No. The, 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 main, the main process is, is the... If, if, it's, it, it is an OJS process. It's just that in that case, this process is not an OJS process per se in the, in the sake of saying you can actually uh, expose HTTP endpoints. It's not meant for that. Do you, you, see, you see what so I'm going? What is it meant for? If you think about what Slack is doing, for example, Slack is using the app to actually run um, run the, the app inside of a, of a context, but most of the, the, the objects which are used on the main process are either local caching or any of these kind of things. It's just to optimize things which are going to be closer to the machine and not just browser-based. Because then in that case, what's the difference between uh, a classic, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Slack instance in your web tab and the, the Slack application. The difference is this process, which runs uh, inside of the, uh, inside of the, um, which runs as a node process inside of the electron shape. If I go back here, I can show you, show back to you, and this is what I mean by that, is when this, when this main process, is that this process, if you, if I launch the application I have today and I remove the call that actually spawns the window, you will see nothing. Nothing will be shown on your screen, it's just a process. A bit like the node process that you run when you run your web app is running, it's, it doesn't have any UI. The fact of saying, from that main process, then I'm going to open a window. This is where your application starts to show up. This is where you can actually see the partial work of this process to actually expose and show you some interfaces so that you can build your application upon. Yeah, yeah, and that's, well, exactly, exactly, we'll go to that on the, on the third demo. This is, this is the point of the third demo, you, 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 will, you will get it pretty easily. But the, let's see, the idea behind it is that if, if you want to build applications that don't necessarily make sense, either on web or, let's say, on very resource-intensive uh, activities, for example, one example I can get if you, if you have a, built or saw some uh, financial application, like a, a, a trade blotter, uh, uh, currency uh, curves and those kind of stuff. If you go that way, you can actually have multiple windows with all of those processes and the process of getting the data and shipping the data to all the windows is handled by the main process. So in that case, you make, you make a pretty good case of saying, I just want to consume it once and I want to be able to display this data on multiple windows on the screen. On the web, it's, it's not really meant for that. You have, a, you have a, a web page, you can open multiple tabs, but then I'm not a fan of having an app that relies into multiple pages. I prefer the SPA approach. Uh, in that case, it's more, it's, it's more suitable for applications that really make use of multiple screens or these kind of things. Okay. So, one more question. Yeah. Like the operating system functions mm -hmm. that come with Electron, are those imported into your node modules when you install? Uh, which which which, uh, which so primitives are you thinking about? Oh, it's like some of like window open open the yeah. Thing that's like, like, that's the magical that's the magical part of Electron. I I didn't show it yet, but the idea is that because those guys have been taking time saying this is our again I'm going back here. This is our APIs. So the stuff you are we they are exposing to you so that you can be, make windows and and everything. Okay, so yeah, th those are, those are JavaScript objects. So you wouldn't have to like, import them? No, no. The, the, that object is just, the, 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 let's say the window object is a weird one because they actually place some things behind the window object to make it behave like handling windows but not in a browser context. You have other objects like the browser window which makes sense in the main process. For example, or other objects around notifications and those things that you see on the left, that are wrapped by um, Electron. So what I mean by that is that every time you will say, okay, I'm fine with my application, I want to build it. 
when you are going to actually build your application, Electron is going to take your JS, CSS, HTML stuff, and is actually going to bind it with the binary of the platform you are, you are trying to target. So for every platform that uh, um, Electron is supporting, Windows, Linux, and Mac, they have a binary that exposes those, those things to Electron. So you don't need to take care of that. They just say, we have a generic object which is browser window, and when the browser window will flow inside of the native uh, window process, Windows process, it will open a window in the Windows way. If you do it on a Mac, it will open it on the Mac way. So the bars and everything will be the UI you expect on the interface you're, you're at, but it's, it's, it's still, yeah, it's, it's, it's wrapping things so that you don't need to take care of dealing with those kind of things. That's, that's basically what frameworks are for. In that case, it's just a UI uh, application desktop framework, let's say. Okay, you're welcome. Um, going back in there, I think it was, where was I? Uh, this one? Yeah, this one. So basically, just, just a small recap. Uh, so the idea is, so the IPC part, you see, you call on one side saying I'm calling the main process, and on the other side, the, you can listen to a window process, so fairly simple to, uh, to understand. As I said, you can use it to communicate between multiple windows, either uh, through the main process or through the windows themselves. Uh, again, you're not forced to use it. If you have an app that works and that has its own APIs and its own way, its own way of do, dealing with authentication and so on, you can use uh, the HTTP call uh, which are in your app already, so nothing changing there. And yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't demo that, but that's, uh, that's one of the weird things about Electron. You can actually do, a, let's say you do a require on your main process, like a node process. You can actually get the same object which has been required from the main process inside of your window. So if the, if the require you get was instantiated with some specific properties or things that you don't want to rebuild or be used in a other way inside of the, of the, inside of the window, you can actually do a remote require, which is going to bring the module along inside of the web view. That's specific. That's, that's, this one is completely, yeah, this one is completely specific to Electron. It's just the fact of saying, I want to reuse a node module that has nothing to do in the browser, but I want to expose partial uh, methods that are on it and you use it inside of that window. You can do that, yes. Angular integration, yay! So let's go. Um, so this one is going to be pretty interesting, I think. And this is, I kept the best for the, for the last demo. Uh, but the idea is, did I, did, did I do changes? No, I didn't, cool. So the idea behind it is I actually went on the internet and the idea was to say, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry for that. We do it. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I can't get away with my, with my hey, I need to see it all the time. That's, that's, that's a bad habit, I know. Um, so the, the idea behind it is that I wanted to actually go on, on this exact example and to say, I want to have uh, an Angular app, which is like, not just a test like I showed you, but something big enough so that it makes sense of showing it up to say, this is actually how Electron can handle those kind of things. So I went on the internet and I said, give me an admin template built in Angular. So I ended up finding one which is called ngx admin, uh, which seems to be, I don't remember how many stars it had on GitHub. Okay, 10,000, okay. That seems to be a pretty good number. Um, and that's, that's how it looks like. So it's, a, it's an admin thing, meaning there's like a lot of things pre-built in it. So if you want to handle your bar or your UI, you can, you can even see here that there is some weird uh, effects to deal with search or whatever. So the idea was to say, I want to take that and I just want to take it and put it right inside of my, of my Electron app to see if I can, how complicated that would be so that I can show you that. And the thing is, it's not complicated at all. That's the whole purpose of uh, that demo. So if, I, if we go back here, again, we're just going to step one more time into this. So 
Same thing, opening an index, just having a few lines here and there. I don't, you didn't see anything of what I did, okay? You didn't see anything of what I did. Uh, that's on purpose. So here's my uh, little app, and if I go here again, the source file folder is going to be quite uh, something you've been seeing so far is, I have a .ts, same file as before, I have an index.html, which is, this time perhaps have a little bit more divs here and there, so that Angular can put stuff in there. Um, I have an app, which is then going to be like, uh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I actually don't really want to dig in there, so I'll leave it there. Just, just believe me. Um, you see you have all those different modules, so charts, uh, components, dashboard, blah, blah, blah. You have a lot of stuff, okay? So, same thing as before, I'm going to say npm start, and I'm just going to run the application. So, so what should happen now is, what we've been seeing is, we'll get to the electron app, which will be showing up anytime soon. There we go. And this guy is actually going to show me my previous example, because the application didn't compile. So, same thing as before, so behind the scene, it compiles, so in that case, it's going to be a little slower than my test because my test was having like two or three classes. <laughs> and this one is like mm, a little bigger, so you can see the, the count of modules here that keeps on growing. So that's probably going to be around 2,000 modules, which is a sizable app. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it does. Say again? No, no, no. This, this, this is the only thing you can't, you can't uh, hot reload in Electron is when you modify the main process, you need to rerun the app. But, but anything that happens inside of the app from a web point of view, that's, that's, that involves uh, hot reload. So, still not done. Your mobile, uh, mobile intent processors are not that fast, actually. Um, so, uh, there I have my app. Come on. There you go. So you might have showing up. But there's just like, there's, there's this one little thing that doesn't show up. If you remember the, the, the screen that I showed you on GitHub, that, that was a graph here. That was a graph that showed up here. And if I look at my error screen here, on my console, this guy says, each chart is not loaded. So that's one of the, let's say, side, side effects of uh, using some of the uh, modules which are, each chart is created. I mean, if you ever used each chart, uh, for doing UI in Angular, it's, it's quite a beast. It's, it's very complicated and it's quite hard to manipulate and to handle. So something I wanted to show you because I actually mentioned uh, before um, just the fact of, uh, where was it? It was here. I mentioned the fact of having the node integration being inside of, uh, inside of the window so that you can do remote require and so on. Sometimes this actually breaks uh, the behavior of uh, Electron. So, for example, here, what I'm just going to bring back, and I didn't want you to see before, is I'm going to say, the web preferences of my window is going to say, I don't want any node integration. So I'm disabling this node integration in the window to make it a purposely web-only view, let's say, that only handles um, HTML, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. So I'm voluntarily decorrelating my web app from uh, the, node, the, the fact of being, to, being able to do node uh, remote requires and those kind of stuff. Okay? You can't do the IPC. No, you can't do the IPC with that anymore. So it depends on what you want to do, but in that case, let's say I, I just wanted to prove the point of saying I want to take the whole app and just a web app that actually do HTTP calls and all that stuff, and I just want to throw it in the Electron container without doing anything. So if I save that, then I have my problem because I'm doing it on the main process. So I'm killing my, I'm killing my process one more, once more, and just just going to launch it again. So what this is going to do, so while it's compiling, so obviously you probably already figured that out, is that when it's going to show up, here's the guy. So it's going to actually load. Let me do that. Woo. The UI is not that great this way, but that's not a problem. 
it's low. Okay, so it's it's loading, but it's not loading with the with the graph yet because it didn't finish to compile. I'm, I'm asking too much to my laptop right now, so it's kind of it's kind of dying. Yes. So, but you get the idea. What what this is basically going to do? And I try to kill the dev tools. It doesn't want to. Yay! Here we go. And it didn't even start to compile. That's <laughs> but the, you, you get the idea, right? So this is going to actually uh, open the app, and then, and then now actually the, the graph will show up. There you go. So in that case, each chart then starts to work, and everything that you saw a little bit in the in the demo is going to to work the way it was in the UI. So, but the cool thing is again, this is a window, so it looks like an actual. Uh, yeah, unless it's very slow on my machine because I'm compiling at the same time, but it can it, it actually looks like a, like an app. Yes. Are there any for you are you aware of any limitations for interacting with maybe desktop API to Like are there certain functionalities that they don't support yet? Um, most of the features that you would expect to be able to do with an app, opening a file, I mentioned menus and all that stuff are in there. There's a lot more than what I what I uh, what I just put on my. Uh, I can actually go to Electron because they have an interesting documentation on that. So Electron JS Docs. Uh, this actually contains the list of uh, the APIs you would expect. But for sure, some of as I mentioned before, some of the APIs that you would find and that you would use uh, on certain machines exist for one, but if you try to use it for another one, that's that's lame, but that's not going to work. For example, the touch bar again. No, you have you 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 have to handle that. There, there are a few uh, a few APIs inside of Electron that tells you which platform you're running on. So if you say, oh, I want to use the touch bar, so then you implement things that goes in the touch bar and that actually pre-populate input. Uh, your icons and all your actions inside of the touch bar. If you try to run that on Windows, it would just plainly crash. Just without saying, yeah, and you're trying to, and that's it. Yeah, doing, doing noises like that is a French thing. Sorry about that. Um, so you see, uh, this is everything you get. So you can you see these cookies, locales. We mentioned the IPC, so enter process. A power monitor, that's one, for example, to see how much power do you have remaining on the machine? So I'm not going to run that process because it takes too much battery and you are like 5% less left on your computer. Um, wow, there's so much about touch bar. Wow, I'm amazed. <laughs> I didn't really look at it, but anyway. So that's, that's, what we, um, that's a bit of what we, uh, what we see so far. Do you work with electronic Not today. But I, 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 I did a few applications on that, which are basically, this is the same principle you, you, you could think of using Electron and not doing, let's say, not doing too much of things that are not supposed, not, not supposed to be done, but uh, let me rephrase. Uh, what I wanted to say is um, today there's a gap of willing to actually build a desktop app because web apps are relying on the browser. So the bridge that this technology is, is giving is to say, we are going to allow you to take your original investments on web apps and actually take that and port it instead of an application. Unless, I don't know, Chrome or Google or any of those companies come with a, a good standard to say, now we are allowing you to actually take an app and download it on your machine and expose some of the APIs because you are contained in the sandbox manner so that you can access to files and those kind of things. In the meantime, this is the way to go. But until then, uh, it's again, it's, it's, uh, it's something which uh, is pretty easy to, to put in place and to use. The idea is whichever norm or standard that comes on top, I hope, will not be that much destructive to what you built with that and will be able to just say, this is okay. Now your application is local, and you will have yet another API that says uh, sandbox app dot, and then you can do your thing because you know you're in the sandbox. Something like that. Did you, did you ever come into like any limitations in your web 
they, they are um, so the windows the windows is one thing because every time you open a window it really opens a window in the way Chrome is handling windows I mean you probably saw this guy already which is the the new um, it's the new task manager of Chrome I find it kind of um, not bad but um, desperate in the sense of Chrome is taking that much memory and so on they actually need to give you a way to look at how much tabs are taking in terms of memory and processes I get that in the sense of everybody is using Chrome and opening dozens and hundreds of tabs everywhere and then you're just killing your machine uh, the point is just to say it's um, in the context of Electron it behaves the same so resources you open in one window and the resources you open in another window it's doubled so there are some um, there's actually a company we used to work with which is in New York which is called I'll get back the name not right now but they are building uh, uh, something similar on top of Electron but they are making it for financial institutions so what they are doing behind the scenes in that case for example is to make sure that some of the resources you're using on multiple windows are able to be shared so instead of like spawning windows and saying oh I want a graph here a graph there and a graph over there and I have like 200 200 and 200 megabytes they just say ah, actually those things are reusing some of the resources so that's a lot of uh, C C++ type of behaviors because that goes inside of the node way of managing the processes between the windows but they are able to I think get back some of the, the memory usage and to share some of those uh, objects across the windows so instead of let's say in that case 600 megs it probably go down to 200 so that's the idea okay let me see where I am on my slides I don't think I have much to I have one more thing to show you and this is probably the most interesting one well, apart from the one I show everything is more interesting than anyway um, if I go uh, back on the package.json so something I mentioned here you will see uh, so we talked about dependencies and dev dependencies so when you have dependencies in Angular it means your dependencies are going to be the one which are going to be packaged with your app dev dependencies are just there because you need them to actually build your app in the case of Electron uh, there's no dependencies everything is a dev dependency it's Electron itself who is going to deal with the fact of having dependencies are going to be either used by him or used by your app but he takes care of it so if you go back here again as I was saying you see all of the angular references the types and all of the libraries like chart.js which should be somewhere around here are dev dependencies okay the other thing I wanted to show you also very quickly is what we talk about targeting platforms so here for example you see I have Electron Dev, Electron Prod, and the two ones, are, three ones I'm looking for is Electron Linux, Mac, and Windows. So here, by running this command, it means you are going to build a targeted, compiled, signed version of your binary for the targeted platform. Actually, Electron also signed the binary so that if somebody wants tries to temper the binary to actually inject CSS or JavaScript to actually do things with your app that they shouldn't, the application will not run so in that case of course I can't really run uh, the first and the third one because that's dependent on the platform I can't really compile against Linux on my Windows machine nor I can do it with, uh, with the Mac version but I kept a version here because that's that's really slow to compile a whole app in that case but I can show you I can see I, I don't know if you can see the numbers but in that case you can see perhaps that the single app was starting to index so meaning uh, everything that comes with the binaries of all the dependencies that goes with the OS that you are you're bundling for and the one on top which is the ngrx admin exe which is the same thing I run before but prepackaged is just 4 megs more I'm just going to go and close that guy and kill my process if he wants to I always have to say yes uh, but you get the idea so if I open the basic one what you can expect from what you've been seeing is just you have a window and yeah yay my fabulous application of before with my button so this one is pretty lame but let's 
Let's open the ng ngx admin one, sorry. And this one is exactly what we saw, but this one is containerized. So the good, the cool thing about it, as you can expect, is that if I take this exe, I zip it, I give it to Matthew, or I give it to anybody of you who has a Windows machine, uh, is going to be able to open it and to actually run the app. Size. the recap. Something disappeared. No recap. So the, the recap is basically um, I'll do it on the fly. Um, so basically the, the 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 recap we can say on that is what we what we saw is is not that complicated to actually port an app inside of Electron. You can have some uh, conflicts, especially with the non-integration in that case with each charts. That's the only one I can remember of which really puzzled me up to the point of actually looking in back GitHub issues of Electron saying, why is he complaining that this it cannot load? I mean, it's a web app. So it seemed that the, it seemed that the guys of each charts using Canvas and some stuff are doing weird stuff with the way they are interacting with, uh, with their objects, something like that along those lines. So that was the only way you can bypass that. Perhaps there are others. I didn't invest more time, but I didn't really use uh, each chart in that case. It was just for the sake of the, the sake of the demo. Actually, all the apps I built using uh, using Electron and potentially Angular or other frameworks, I never got any issue. That's one more thing I wanted to add. Also, is again, this is a, uh, this is a, a web browser. So if you even have an app which is built in jQuery or Knockout or whatever is the technology that is was built. Even five years ago, you can you can take that and drop it in there, and it will work. It, it doesn't have, let's say, the fanciness of using the hot reload and stuff like that because it's built with Webpack and you have Angular that comes on top and so on. But because it's just an HTML uh, engine that runs app inside of a container, if you have an app which is built with that, you can just use that container to to run it. There's nothing there's nothing that prevents you to do so. That's a recap. Uh, so the build, we, we saw it uh, we saw it quickly. So as I said, running it on most of the m uh, main OSs. Uh, the fact that the packaging platform is part of Electron. So when you say I want to install Electron, Electron on Windows come with Electron Build, which is the the module for building apps for Electron for Windows. And when you will install it on uh, Linux or or Mac, it will do the same. But with sp with platform specific binaries. Which makes sense. And I did the demo. <laughs> so that's a very small recap on everything we saw, we have been seeing so far. So as we've, as we've been talking about it, so Electron is multi-platform. That's one of the greatest part of it. It can run all of your NPM modules, as we see NPM modules that you install on the on the main process. You can install nearly anything you want. Though I wouldn't install Express, for example, because again, that's not the, the purpose of having the main process, not to host web APIs, but I would probably wrap something around it to use the IPC because that's more efficient and that's probably the way to go. But if you want to, I mean, let's put it this way. If you want to do it, you can, because at the end, if you want to say, I want to expose uh, even an FTP endpoint on my node project or an HTTP endpoint, it's just a process. If your process is allowing you from the OS you're running to actually have those extensions from outside your main process, uh, apart from the Windows, if you want to do it, fine. It's just again, it's just a node process. So that's why I'm saying all of your node process, all of your NPM modules, uh, and you can run all of your front-end frameworks. The example was, of course, because we're talking about Angular about making Angular inside of it. But again, if you want to do jQuery in there, fine, no problem. <laughs> and there we go. That was, the, that was the last slide. So I can take any questions now. If you have, uh, if you have some around what I've been demoing slash showing to you. Not that much. Yeah, go ahead. Forget about it. The, the purpose of this platform is really to 
make web apps run as desk desktop apps. There's no the the, the this question. I mean, you, you just just for the just for the record, because I've been reading some of those questions on the GitHub repo of Electron, of people asking, oh, when is this going to be supported for mobile? And some people say, no, it's really not the purpose of the framework. The frame, purpose of the framework is to build desktop apps that are built using web technologies. If you want to do this kind of things, you probably have to look at native script and those kind of, uh, yeah. There's a perfect analog from desktop to phone called Ionic. It's the exact same with mm -hmm. and executable. So you build a, uh, a native iOS or Android app and it's in TypeScript. And the whole purpose of that is it just launches web browsers the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then renders your web browser. Yeah. It's a bit, you, you, can, you can relate with those kind of technologies like Cordova in the sense that it runs inside of a, of a mobile app. The only difference is that where native script or Ionic or those kind of platform kind of differ is that your, your, your JavaScript is going to be compiled against native code, whereas Cordova just runs JavaScript inside of a web view. So that's, that's different technologies. But again, the idea behind that is that this makes use and sense of desktop apps because Again, in that case, if, we, if you look at all, the, um, all of the funny, the touch bar is one, I'm always making the point, sorry. Uh, this touch bar amazes me. Um, um, if you look at all the, all the ports and all the APIs which are in there, menus, notification could be one, but menus and all of those others don't really fit in the mobile, uh, mobile world. So it's, it's really targeted for desktop. <coughs> 